Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So we're going to do uh, some changes this time that affect our editor and also our main game. Uh, I realized last time we worked in the editor a little bit, we created this menu here. So instead of using the arrow keys like super old school, we can now just click a tile and then draw it. Oh, by the way, I made a new map. How do you guys like this new map? Pretty cool, huh? Um, you can click a tile and draw it on the screen and select it that way instead of using the arrow keys and just guessing what tile you're on. Um, but unfortunately, if you remember, we save by pressing S. I'm not going to do that right now. And then we load by pressing L. Um, so if I were to save this, I'm not going to right now, but I saved this last map. If we go into the game, I'm going to start and go to play, it's the old map. So even if we spend time making a map in the editor, it doesn't actually get transferred to our game. And the reason is, is because uh, these are the four classes that we're we'll working in this time, by the way. The game, the editor, the state manager, and a tiny bit of the leveler. Um, in our game class, or I'm sorry, in our state manager class, uh, we haven't been here a while, but it's kind of our main overarching game state uh, holder. So we're either in the main menu, or we're in the game, or in the editor. If we hit play, you can see where, you know, those are our three states. This is the main menu right here. We also have a play state and an editor state. So the state manager kind of just uh, sets up those classes. Like if we were to go to the uh, main menu, or we're already there. If we were to go to the game class, you know, we create a new game with the map, go to the editor, uh, create a new editor class. And so herein lies the problem. We create a new game with the map, but what is map set to? Well, it's this super uh, unupdated version of the map that we used to have to edit like manually. Remember to like draw a map, we'd have to like change the tiles to make them dirt or grass or water. That's super, super outdated um, because we want to use our editor function, right? So luckily we don't need to do a lot of coding. We just need to kind of bring the state manager class up to par with the rest of our program. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we need to change map from a double integer to a tile grid because we run on tile grids now. Double integers are super old school. Uh, go ahead and import tile grid here, import. And this is not a tile grid. This is a bunch of integers, arrays of integers, I should say. So what we need to do is load our map from, uh, here's new map one. If you have it set up like I do, that's what we save our maps as by default, new map one. We wanna load that and set it as a tile grid. Now we already have that method in our game. If you recall where, here's a spoiler, it's right up here. It's in our leveler class, which is the helper that we kind of made real quick and never really went back to. The leveler holds our um, methods for reading files and saving to files. So here we save our map and here we load our map. If you go to our editor inside of here, um, you can see we just call these static functions uh, somewhere in here. Like right here where we load the map, we're actually not calling it from inside this class. Or we're not calling this method doesn't exist in the editor. We're calling it from the leveler statically. Um, so the first thing we should do is we should change it to a capital L to uh, denote that it is a static method. Um, just kind of convention that way. So go to the leveler class and change this to a capital L load map and save map should be the same, capital S, save map. Now back in our editor, we'll need to change the save map function as well. There we go, save map. Okay. Now that's, uh, remember I said we're not gonna do a lot in the leveler class, that is literally all we're doing in the leveler class. So we can go ahead and close this out now. And in the state manager, we're gonna use that same load map function. So up here, we're going to import a static call. Remember, because we're using the, the uh, method in there. Static helpers, oops, helpers dot leveler dot asterisk. Uh, we actually don't need that. Asterisk gives us uh, access to all the methods. We just need load map right here. So put that in there so we have access to the load map method instead of our state manager class. And down here, tile grid map equals load map. And it takes a string for the tile or for the uh, file name. So down here, mine is new map one. Uh, you should see whatever your map is called down here. Just make sure to type that in exactly, including capitals. New map one, semicolon. Now we still have some errors. And the reason is because the game class has also not been updated and it's expecting a double array of integers. So we're gonna change this from that to a tile grid. 
and uh, we'll just uh, here let's make name it grid tile grid grid and change this to this dot grid equals grid or this dot grid denotes that we're looking at the entire class's variable which would be up here outside of the method and grid is a local variable inside this method so grid uh, it's the same as all of our constructors really so this dot grid equals grid and now if this worked um, you might have some problems uh, because we didn't update the starting position for our enemies but let's go ahead and try it let's try it out and run it if it worked you should see when you hit play the same map that you have saved here that was from the editor so play it worked for me i have the map that i had in the editor um, but you can see the enemies are starting right down here and that's because we don't actually have yet a way to denote a starting point for the enemies other than manually altering the code so i'm going to go and change that right now uh if yours if you're going to air this far into the video then i would just make sure that you copy the code exactly this far into this video and also if you're having trouble with your map go into the editor and you know draw something that you want to oops why, why is that disconnected draw a map and then make sure to hit s to save it you won't see any prompts on the screen um, until we exit here and you should see the file down here if it's not down here right click click refresh and it should appear down there um yeah uh, also if it's coming out as a different name than you want it to be uh, just go to the editor save map and here's where we set the name of our our map right there so let's go back to our game class and for me i want to set my enemy starting point to where this dirt tile is so remember we start at zero zero and we go uh, the x first so that'd be zero one two x and then zero y so in our game class right here where we start our wave manager and we make the enemies grid.getTile i was at 14 8 now i'm at two zero so just change these numbers to wherever your maze starts hit run play and now they're following the maze and of course our enemies can already detect the turns of the maze and they follow it all the way to the end of the maze now i also mentioned last episode that i was going to make a custom menu for uh patrons patreons i don't know the term over here because this gray is looking pretty bland and i went ahead and did that uh so if you look in their resources folder you will see or i guess you'll see in my resources folder i have the menu background which you already have and the menu background two and menu background editor now i didn't want to leave the non-patrons in the dust completely so uh i went ahead and in the video description of this video on youtube you can download menu background two that'll update the the in-game menu that you see uh, when we run and go to play from this gray blob um so go ahead and pause the video now if you want and save that put it inside of your resources folder or your res folder make sure it's named uh, menu underscore background two or name it something else that you'll remember and can call back to later i wouldn't replace the one we already have i, I suppose it doesn't matter but uh, there's not really a huge need to right now so you might want to hold on to it um, so i named my menu background two so go ahead and save that put it in the resources folder uh and hit refresh if it doesn't appear here and it should be there now patrons i haven't forgot about you as well so first off let's set up this new game one for patreons i have i'm just gonna use patrons and patreons interchangeably uh, i have the editor version of this as well and also on patreon you can find the psd file for it if you want to edit it and make it your own and also the the font file for the font that i used for it it's honestly not that cool looking <laughs> i'm sure if you guys saved it you know that it's like pretty pretty bland but it's better than the gray background we have now uh, so let's go to our where would this be game class and right here we have draw quad text it's uh, completely manual you know quick load menu background just change that to menu background two then run it play that was easy right now our towers are at least mine are i assume yours are as well uh overlapping this cool little tower overlay they have this tower text so we're just gonna move the towers down a little bit uh, we start our menu up here on line 34 if you have the same setup as me and from 0y we're going to change that to 100y and hit run play there we go and we got a nice or a better looking than a gray box a little tower selector and you click the towers and put it on the map now if we go to our editor you'll realize that we not only do we not have this new texture but we actually have no texture at all so 
uh, you know, non-patrons fall along and we'll do the gray texture and then patrons just substitute the, the editor texture. So let's go to the editor class here. Actually, in the game class, we're just gonna copy and paste this. Perfect, just like that. Copy and paste that. Go to the editor and in draw. You can put it in the top line because we're not actually drawing the grid over it. And um, just change menu background two to either menu background or on Patreon, I'll have menu underscore background underscore editor. So underscore editor. And keep in mind while we're here, we should go up and move the UI down, uh, the tile picker UI from zero to 100. Otherwise you'll have that same issue where it was blocking the text. So let's go and try that now. Uh, we have play, which we already know works. Editor and it says tiles. And you can uh, draw the tiles. Now let's go ahead and make sure that this save and load function works. Cause I was telling you guys earlier that it should work, but it was uh, irresponsible of me not to try it out. So I'm gonna go to the editor here and I'm gonna change my map a little bit. Uh, instead of going all the way down here, they're gonna cut across here. And it's gonna extend all the way over here. There, it became a lot, a lot shorter of a map. Um, but let's just see if that worked. I'll keep some islands here. It looks like uh, Hawaii almost. I mean, you know, looks like islands. So when you're done making your map, hit S. You won't see anything, but if everything's coded correctly, it should work. Exit out, run, and hit play. And now you have the new map. So no longer do we need to manually edit the, the text file in there. We can make it in the editor uh, and go right to our game. It's looking a lot better, honestly. It's it's crazy how just changing one like gray box to something that's labeled in uh, an actual color can make it look a lot more like a game. Um, so next time, next time, next time, what are we gonna work on? Something exciting, I'm sure. Something cool. Uh, I think I wanna make another tower, just real quick. It won't be the entire episode, I don't imagine, unless it's something really different. Um, and I'll have the textures on Patreon, of course, for the new, the new tower as well. So thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you all next time on Indie Programmer. <laughs>